Hello, my name is Danielle and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I will be introducing my two Pan That Palette projects for 2022. This video is a little bit late into January, so I did take introduction photos at the beginning of the month, but my palettes, specifically one of them, might look a little bit differently than it did in those photos. Um, so you get a sneak peek into some January progress. But from now on, I am planning to film my updates on the first Friday of every month so that hopefully I can have a little bit more of a consistent amount of progress shown in each of my videos and they can be coming up a bit earlier on in the month. So I first was introduced to project panning in 2021 and I started panning myself after seeing a lot of content on social media, um, like on YouTube and on Instagram. And I was a bit confused by it, but I was intrigued. So I decided to just give it a try as an experiment. And through that kind of trial period during 2021, I found that there were some things that I liked about project panning. So I figured I would continue on this year. And so I will be having a few different projects to introduce over the course of the next couple of weeks. My favorite project that I tried for the first time in 2021 was my Pan That Palette project. I started out with, uh, I started out very ambitious with three palettes and a couple months in I uh, decided to bring it down to two palettes and even that was pretty ambitious for my first time trying project panning. Um, but I kind of chose one to focus on and one to serve as a companion palette and I will actually be continuing working on the companion palette this year as my main focus palette. So all of my previous progress can actually be found on my Instagram page. Um, so check that out if you're interested. But this year I will be continuing working on one of those two previous palettes. Last year I did work on both of my palettes in the same sort of fashion. This year I will be trying out two different types of projects and working on each of my palettes in a little bit of a different way. So my first palette, the palette that I first began working on in 2021 is the Soft Glam Palette by Anastasia Beverly Hills. This little palette here is pretty iconic. It's also a pretty commonly panned palette. Um, and for me personally, this palette is one of my oldest palettes. I remember very vividly when I bought this in a Sephora in 2017, I believe. Um, at the time, I was working in a job that required me to do a lot of travel. So a lot of the memories that I have of this palette are from that time period when I was spending a lot of time in hotel rooms and I have a lot of fond memories of preparing for events or even just relaxing in my hotel for the evening and spending some time with this palette and trying it out, um, testing out new and different looks with this little guy. So this palette has a lot of sentimental value to me, but it is getting older. Um, it also is one that has a lot of weight for me personally. I bought this palette during a very difficult time of my life. 2017 and 2018 um, were very difficult years for me personally. So this also has some deeper meaning for me in that sense. And I would like to just symbolically move on <laughs> from all of that by moving this product that feels very tied to that time out of my collection. So I will enjoy using the Soft Glam while it is here, but I am definitely ready for it to um, move on. So I'll show you the progress that I made so far last year in 2021. So here is what the palette is looking like. And I think perhaps you can see that there are several pans in here. There are actually three pans in this palette now. At the beginning of the month, there was pan only in Tempera and Cypress Umber. And I hope that you can see this on camera, but there is a tiny little baby pan in Glistening as well. 
um, a hit pan in that shadow on my first use of this palette this year. Um, and so that was a shock. That was a surprise. I wasn't expecting to hit pan that day, but you know, it's a pleasant surprise. So we do have a little bit of progress showing already this year. So this will look a little bit different from the intro photo because of that. But all in all, there's a lot of product left in here. Um, only three pans. So my first goal will be to hit pan in all of the shades that I will be working on and then eventually hopefully to finish them out. And I do have the ambitious goal of finishing up the shades that I will be working on in this palette by the end of 2022. ABH kind of has a reputation for having eyeshadows that are easy to hit pan on, easy to use up, formulas that are maybe a little bit dustier or crumblier. So hopefully that will be doable for me, but just looking at the little amount of progress <laughs> that I made in 2021, I am a little bit nervous about it. So we'll see how this year goes. But the one exception that I have with this palette is that I will not be trying to actively pan these three darker shades on the end here. Um, and my reason for that is just that these are the most dusty and crumbly in my experience of the ABH shadows, um, at least in this palette. With, with the others, I can deal with the fallout and it's fine because they are a bit of a lighter color. But with these three, um, which is Cypress, Umber, Noir, and then Mulberry here, when <laughs> when I experience fallout with these shades, it really sits on this little bone here. Um, this I have a pretty pronounced ridge here between my my cheeks, which are pretty full and large, and my eye socket. So when these darker shadows land in that little bit, and then I try to swipe it away, even if I'm using a very like gentle little brush to sweep it away, it usually leaves me looking like I have a black eye. Um, and I have tried so many different ways to try and fix that. I've put concealer over it. I've tried to like really be blush heavy over it. And no matter what I do, I can't make it not look like I have a black eye. So to just, you know, forego all of that, to try to avoid some of that unnecessary um, frustration from, from that experience, I'm just planning to, to not try to be actively panning those shades. I'll leave them in the palette for now, but in my projects in general this year, I am planning to do a midpoint refresh about halfway through the year. So at the beginning of July, I will kind of have an opportunity to rethink and adjust my projects as necessary if I'm hate panning something and I just cannot get any progress on it. I can choose at that time to roll it out or toss it out or whatever is necessary. Another rule that I'm going to have for myself is that I can declutter these shades if I so decide at that time. So for now, Cypress Umber Noir and Mulberry are sticking with us, but they may get decluttered halfway through the year if I'm just not using them or growing frustrated when I do try to use them or whatever it is. So like I said earlier, my goal with this palette is just to hit pan on all of the shades that I haven't already except for these three. Um, and then once I've hit pan on everything, then I will move forward with trying to actively be emptying out everything. Because that's my eventual goal, if I end up you know, emptying out tempera here before I hit pan on something else, that's okay. But I really would like to focus my energy on just simply hitting pan on most of these shades beforehand and then trying to get them all used up. So those are my plans for Soft Glam this year. And now I will introduce my second Pan That Palette project for 2022. So the second palette that I will be working on in 2022 is Norvina by Anastasia Beverly Hills. 
So this palette I am approaching with a little bit of a different angle. As you will see when I do open this up, only one shade in here has been swatched. Nothing else has even been touched. And the reason that I swatched one of them at all was because I had not yet decided that I would be sharing my progress on YouTube. So I just went ahead and swatched the shadow. Um, but I thought this would be an extra fun one to kind of share my progress on. So I decided to go ahead and include this in this video. My plan for this palette is to pan it in order. There is only one other YouTuber that I found that has made videos doing this. Her name is Taylor Buell, I think is probably how you would pronounce it. Um, and she calls the project pan that palette in order, of course. So I haven't heard of any other creators doing this project, though um, it's definitely possible. I checked in actually with Taylor to ask her if she created this project or if somebody else had done it before and she wasn't sure herself. So if you know of another creator who has done this or created this project, please let me know. But until then, of course, I personally was inspired by Taylor, so I'm going to credit her. So for Taylor and her Pan That Palette in Order project, she is allowing herself to work on the full palette um, while she is actively trying to pan one shadow at a time in order. Um, she can kind of like dip into the other shadows in the palette. For me, because this is a completely untouched palette, I'm planning to not touch any of the other shades. So until I hit any pan in here, I will be only working on one shadow at a time. Once I hit pan in a shadow, then I can continue to use it throughout the project. So once I hit pan on the first shade in this palette and move on to the second one, I can go back and dip into the first one if I so wish. But what I will not be doing is beginning working on the last one when I still haven't hit pan on the first or second in this palette. I will only allow myself to begin working on those shades as they come according to the project. So I hope that makes sense. I'm going to go ahead and show you what this palette is looking like, but it's brand new, so <laughs> it's not that exciting. So here is what the palette is looking like right now. As you can see, only one shade has been touched. The rest are pristine little babies, <laughs> not yet disturbed in their little pans. So I am very excited to see how long it will take me to hit pan on each of these shadows and to make this palette look like it's actually gotten some use and some love in my collection. So from now on, each time I roll in a new shadow, I will actually be swatching it for the first time ever on camera. Uh, this time I have swatched it, but I've actually only, I, I haven't touched this since I swatched it because then I decided to do this on YouTube and I didn't want to disturb it even more, um, which is probably silly. But regardless, there it is swatched. The shadow is called Dreamer and it's a nice kind of champagne-y shade. This shadow does have a bit more impact than some of the shimmers in, uh, in Soft Glam, so I'm very excited about that. A lot of these shimmers actually look like they might be more impactful, so I'm excited to have a little bit more texture to incorporate. I think that could be fun to pair this these types of shimmers with those in the Soft Glam. Because this palette is essentially brand new, my goal isn't going to be necessarily to empty out any pans. I'm just going to focus on hitting pan on each shade before I try to empty anything out. I'll be continuing to work on all of the shadows that have pan in them. So if I do empty something out, that will be great. That's more than welcomed. But that's not going to be my main focus with this project until everything in here has a little shiny pan in it. So then I might roll this into just my standard pan that palette project or choose to work on it in some other capacity. But for now, that's my plan. I'm anxious to see um, how quickly I can do this because there are 14 shadows in here. Even if I was hitting pan on one a month, um, I would not 
get pan on each of these by the end of the year. So this might be a couple year project, who knows, but I'm excited to uh, try this out. I think it'll be kind of fun, kind of, um, kind of different. Like I said, I've only seen one other person do this. So I think it could be fun. And hopefully it'll be a little bit extra fun to uh, be swatching a eyeshadow for the very first time on camera. It'll be fun for me at least. I hope it's fun for you as well to be able to kind of see some of my first reactions. So thank you for watching this video. I hope that my approach to this project has intrigued you and that you might be interested enough to stay. If so, if you would like to continue seeing my progress throughout the year on these two palettes, please consider subscribing. I would love to have you here. If you are doing a Pan That Palette project or any other project pan, I would love to know. I love to watch YouTube videos of um, project panners and also to look at content on Instagram and all of that. So if you are doing a project pan or a Pan That Palette project, or if you have somebody who is like your favorite content creator who creates panning content, um, please let me know. I'm always looking for new people to be watching and to gain inspiration from, so I would love to hear. Thank you again for watching this video, and I hope to see you in the next one.